Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us back here at Sprout Lee's channel. We're sitting here once again with Dr. Sen, and we're going to dive into a couple of questions you guys have and try to get some answers for you. But first off, Doc, how are you doing today? I am doing well. We have a nice cloudy day in Florida. Wonderful, wonderful. It's cloudy here in Ohio, too. Luckily, no, no tornadoes this time around, which I am very grateful for. But here, <laughs> so let's kind of dive in a little bit. So first and foremost, the idea of whole plant has been brought up again and again and again. Whole plant versus single molecule THC or CBD, what a lot of other places tend to be focusing on. And this is kind of your bread and butter and what you're focusing on here. So, so tell me, what really is it about whole plant that is appealing and better than the single molecule formulas people are doing? Sure. So, you know, a whole plant, as we have pointed out, we're doing water soluble and oil soluble. So what are naturally water soluble? They're minerals, they're vitamins, they're antioxidants, some what are called flavones and molecules like that. And those are present in all plants, all animals. Distribution might be different. Um, and, and cultivation conditions will also change their composition. Now, I don't think we really know, does magnesium help the major cannabinoid and the major terpene to work better? But we do know that those molecules are there, whether they directly affect the quote-unquote experience that people associate with THC or CBD or yet another major cannabinoid like CBC or CBN. But there are so many, so many examples in the natural products world that no single molecule by itself really is the total experience, the total yeah. benefit, right? Otherwise, you know, I think I have pointed this out before, would simply isolate out the potassium from bananas and take that as a pill. We don't do that. Banana has tremendous amounts of other stuff. Do they help the potassium to be more bioavailable or more effective? We don't know. I don't think we'll ever find that because it's very difficult. What about the whole plant oil? Why is that important? Because cannabinoids and terpenes, the, the only two groups of oil that people talk about, are only two of them. Then there are omega-3, omega-6. We think of that in the context of fish, but plants have those too. They have what are called phytosterols, which are not bad like cholesterol is, but they're still sterols, which the body needs and can use. Um, for example, we found out that in our oil preparations, there's a group of molecules called caproic and caprylic acid. These are, these belong to a family of molecules that are the most potent, safest, anti-inflammatory natural molecules known to man, mm -hmm. right? Now, do those help the CBD or THC or counter THC help CBD? We don't know, yeah. but they are there. And I keep going back to the example of, there are plenty of knowledge base right now that basically says that if you really believe that one or two or a small group of molecules in an otherwise natural product are desired, then frequently, it, it, pretty much every single case, the amount that you need, if you get it from the isolated preparation, you need more than if you do the whole plant or animal. Fish and omega-3, omega-6 is the classic example. You know, there have been studies that shows that. And I, again, yeah. at the expense of being boring, bring up potassium and banana. Bananas are just as a whole plant, a great fruit. Potassium happens to be one of the most, I don't know, recognized benefits, but that's not all. You know, in yeah. tea, catechins are there, but there are many other great things in tea that help your heart health and so on and so forth. You know, you can think of tomato, lycopene are there, but tomato has many other things. You know, yeah. as we talked about, you know, what makes Granny Smith apple any different from the Golden Delicious apple? We don't know. Yeah, I think um, I think it's it's interesting because it is kind of a it's a fine line between appealing to nature versus hey guys, we don't know exactly what's happening here, but we can look at the benefits of it. 
we, we can see in the studies what, what the effect is without exactly knowing what the cause is because you don't really know how things interact on, on a, mac, a micro level, right? You, can't, you yep. can't say this is exactly going to interact with this in this exact way and so on and so forth. But you can look at the results from them and you, then you can make inferences and the science over time is still researching all these things too. A absolutely. And that's why what I've tried to kind of bring across as a message is we want to deliver the experience. I encourage everybody to go into this database called Leafly. Under every single strain, the list, what it does, are those exactly molecularly described? No. What is euphoria? Euphoria might mean one thing to me, something slightly different to you. Yeah. Creativity energizing or you know energy feeling all of these are slightly abstract highly unlikely that any single molecule is responsible for that yeah. the beauty of the cannabis field is last 40 50 years the genetics advances in genetics has been so striking and incredible in terms of creating strains that deliver different experience that's what we are focusing on, which is why ours is a slower process. Makes sense. It, yeah. It's easy to say, well, I'll, I'm going to give you 10 milligrams of THC. No, 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 I'm only going to give you five, right? We are not saying any of that. We are saying, well, this is a sativa dominant strain that makes you euphoric versus yet another sativa dominant that makes you creative. Oh, here's an indica that relaxes your whole body. Here's another indica that kind of relieves your anxiety. Mm -hmm. right we don't know which molecule at what dosage does that but we do know that these strains have been tested out over decades so to the extent we can deliver that experience that's what mother nature gave us i can point to or try to spell out a bunch of molecules but you know i i would feel uncomfortable assigning very specific things yeah, to very is. specific experience. experience is just that an experience and in some cases that is directly linked to the benefit if something is relaxing gee that means if you're stressed out or with pain it will be a benefit makes sense so doc right. from there as we kind of continue on, tell us a, a bit more about the water soluble side of things. Like people, people were inquiring about the water versus oil soluble and how, how this works out. Can you give us a little bit more information to kind of clarify things for people? Sure. So, you know, from a very high sort of intensity chemistry science basis, every molecule that you can think of is going to dissolve in something but not in something else. So the, the molecule itself is as a result called the solute, something for which you're looking for a solvent, right? Some gases even, oxygen goes into water, carbon dioxide goes into water. So there the gases are solute, ocean water is the solvent. So every single chemical molecule has its solubility property that's absolutely inherent in that molecule. So if some molecule, a molecule, a chemical is not water soluble, without chemically altering it, you cannot make it water soluble. So what's being done in this whole field is that people are extracting oils and then they are doing all kinds of physical or chemical manipulation, encapsulating it, micro, nano, all of that emulsifying it with different emulsifier. They are breaking down otherwise multi-molecular composite into smaller particles, nano, nanoparticle, right? But no matter what you do, a molecule that's not soluble in water will not be soluble in water unless you chemically modify it. And the case in point is if you go into this company by the name Freight Bioscience, they're doing exactly that which is taking THC molecule or CBD molecule, attaching chemically one or more sugar moieties to it. Now this new molecule, let's not forget, it is a new molecule, is water soluble, right? Now, does mother nature ever do it? Absolutely. 
That's why there are, in for any molecule, there are multiple forms in a whole organism, be it plant, be it animal. And the naturally sugar-attached molecules are called glycosylated molecules. There are proteins onto which sugar molecules are attached. There are lipids onto which sugar molecules are attached, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a different chemical forms. So when you have created different chemical form, now it's a new molecule. This molecule will have its own solubility or insolubility pattern. So as I said, we are relying on it, pretty much entirely on what Mother Nature has given us, yeah. which is well, when we first started delving into G, can we have water soluble, beneficial, psychoactive material from cannabis or hemp? The question was, if Mother Nature created it, how would we pull it out without destroying it? If we extract the traditional way, then all that breaks apart and you start getting isolated chemicals. In Mother Nature, usually there are multi-complex molecular assembly. You know, if you, if you get your blood drawn, and I'm tired of using the cholesterol example, you will see testosterone that people talk about. There is free and not free. Mm -hmm. Testosterone exists as a free chemical as well as bound to either a carrier protein or its receptor. Thyroid, when people have thyroid disease, they go in and they get, get measured T3, T4, which are the two different forms of this molecule called thyroxine, but there are also other bound forms. And each of those is a different natural molecular form that will have, each will have its own solubility or insolubility property, right? So when we say water soluble, it's not that I've made it in a form that naked eye cannot see, it, microscope cannot see, it. that does not mean it is dissolved as we chemically define it, right? So when we say water soluble, that means if you take this, then the best way I can describe it, and you start removing water gradually, right? Just like if you take a sugar solution, let it sit. What do you see? The volume goes down and down and down and you start seeing crusts of sugar that came out, right? Eventually you'll just see a, a whole crust that's in the bowl. You put water back in, all of that disappears, goes right back into solution. That is a probably the, the simplest way of explaining what water solubility is. That means you can remove water then what happens in the remaining water, the concentration of the molecule that you're interested in you're talking water soluble evenly goes up because the solutions get more and more and more concentrated. You don't have the top at a higher concentration of sugar bottom at, at a lower kind. No, the whole solution now is more concentrated. You add water back in, the whole thing gets diluted and diluted and diluted, right? There is no microcosm, or as we call it, microenvironment, microchemical distribution. It's uniform because water forms a shell around the molecule. Now it's pretty much water. Hmm. All right. Well, it's in doc. I mean, honestly, you should be teaching organic chemistry at this point in university. I used to teach, but that was in the prehistoric days before most people I talked to were born. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. But all right, listen, thank you for the lesson. If anyone else has any other questions about the water solubility of things, let us know. Hopefully you got some good answers from the doc this time around. But again, by all means, please submit some more questions. Doc, before we go, is do you want to give any updates about Sproutly? Anything else going on lately? Yeah, we. Um, I think the biggest thing that has happened, which is we now have a relationship with a partner that has a research license that's allowing us to carry out evaluation of our formulation, very much focused on the beverage because that's where the real value of our water soluble whole plant extract is. Mm -hmm. But you know the nervousness that I have had all along as, as we see in the beverage arena is when people do taste testing historically, they have been tasting the beverage matrix. Oh yeah, this is a good flavor. But when they add the plant back in, it changes, right? So you're almost taking pot shots. Well, you know, people like peach pomegranate flavor. There's a good flavor systems. So let, let's market a uh, uh, beverage with that flavor. 
So yeah. we have now formed this relationship with Kingston Cannabis and have started doing taste and flavor testing with the final beverage with everything in it. Yeah. For that, we needed a research license from Health Canada. Our partner has it. So I've just started it and I'm really, really excited about it because I don't, in the US, you can do a lot of this evaluation. In Canada, you can't, which is why, you know, the beverages that are out there, you know, I've never heard a good comment about the beverages, but it's because of the regulation. If you cannot taste it, how would you say? Yeah. Yeah. Like? So that's been a huge plus and we have started on it pretty aggressively. So our goal is really now to take through many of our formulations through the human evaluation, if you will, sensory evaluation to make sure what goes out, just like what happened with Kalo, actually tastes fresh, tastes good. People enjoy drinking it. Yeah, right? that makes sense. I mean, it's kind of surprising that people couldn't taste the final product for a lot of these. And it makes sense that this is a step you have, you have to rectify. And yeah, I mean, you got, you went through all the regulations and now everything's good. So I look forward to seeing some of that. Look forward to maybe tasting one someday, but Doc, absolutely. Thank you so much for your time today. And thank you everybody again for watching. As always, you got questions, send them over and we'll happily dive into them. But for now, stay tuned and we'll get you another video over the wire as soon as another one can be filmed. Doc, have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you, Mike.